Good morning, guys. It's early. The sun's still not even up. But I woke up my baby chickens. So if you hear pecking in the background, that's because I got 16 baby chicks inside where I'm staying so that they don't get cold while they're still little bitty babies. So, good morning. We, uh... I just woke up and saw that Robert Morris's church, Gateway Church, was giving their final explanations of Robert Morris touching a 12-year-old girl. And so I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to leave the link for their full video inside the comments. But... Okay, guys. The common thread between all the pedophile pastors is that they have this apostolic thing going on. The new apostolic reformation. The new apostles reforming theology about the church. They are taking things that are from outside of scripture and making whole new programs that are based on Kabbalah and the doctrine of the fallen angels that they've been taught in their Freemasonic system. That's why they keep going apostolic this and apostolic that. These guys are phonies. As you all know, back in June of this year, Gateway Church engaged the law firm Haynes & Boone to conduct an independent investigation related to the childhood sexual abuse of Cindy Clemeshire by our former senior pastor, Robert Morris. Haynes & Boone has completed their work and their findings have been presented to the members of a subcommittee that was formed to receive and act on this information. This, this subcommittee of the board is made up of myself, Kenneth Fambro, and Dane Miner, who are sit sitting here behind me. They also continue. Hold on. Why is this guy got his Freemason hand sign, right? And why does this guy have his feet crossed? These guys are doing this stuff on purpose. Watch, because he's going to end up crossing his feet. This is, these guys are Masons, you guys. The guy is behind him. So this guy, this group of Masons, this guy with his little vagina right there that he's making, this guy is one of the subcommittee guys. So one of Robert Morris's co-conspirators is one of the people, one of the only three people who gets to see this um, report. They have an obligation if Robert Morris gets in trouble, he can throw up his hands and say, who will show pity to a poor widow's son? And if any other Mason hears that, they have to run to the aid of that other Mason. This guy is using Luciferian. Sorry, I just caught that. What in the world? Why is that light like that going across the floor? Sorry, guys. I, I'm trying to see everything, like stage lighting and everything. These guys put stuff everywhere in their occultism. You just serve as elders of Gateway Church. Findings have been presented to the members of a subcommittee that was formed to receive and act on this information. This, this subcommittee of the board is made up of myself, Kenneth Fambro and Dane Miner, who are sit sitting here behind me. They also continue to serve as elders of Gateway Church. Today, I'm going to share to, with you, as members of Gateway Church, a summary of the facts that we have learned. First, what happened to Cindy Clemeshire was heartbreaking and vile, and we denounced sexual abuse in all of its forms. And we feel deep sorrow for those who have been victimized by such despicable actions. But I do want to take a minute and acknowledge her bravery in coming forward and telling her story to bring awareness to this issue. 
She has countless, she has impacted countless lives. And because of her courage, the three of us in particular have had several people come up to us and tell us that they had their own stories where they were victims. And Cindy gave them. Because this is a sex cult. There are more victims. There are more victims in all of these Sunday worship churches that have Freemason pastors because Freemasonry is the religion of Lucifer. Remember how the fallen angels kept wanting to mate with women? It's a sex cult. Freemasonry worships the fallen angel cult. The upper management in these Sunday worship cult churches, they're worshiping the devil. They're doing the things of his, of their fathers, of their father, the devil. The courage in coming forward and telling her story to bring awareness to this issue. She has countless, she has impacted countless lives. And because of her courage, the three of us in particular have had several people come up to us and tell us that they had their own stories where they were victims. And Cindy gave them the courage to come forward and seek help. And so we continue to pray for healing, not just for her, but for those who have been abused that are part of our family. Over the years, Robert Morris shared his version of this story, that he was unfaithful in his marriage while in his early 20s. And according to his version, Robert confessed his sin to apostolic leaders in the late 1980s, many years before Gateway Church was formed. And that confession that he was having sex with a 12-year-old gave any of his leadership blackmail material to get them to, to get Robert to do whatever they wanted him to do. It's a Freemason sex cult. He confessed that he was having a affair with a 12 year old and his Freemason buddies covered up the crimes. He's Over the years, Robert Morris shared his version of this story that he was unfaithful in his marriage while in his early 20s. And according to his version, Robert confessed his sin to apostolic leaders in the late 1980s, many years before Gateway Church was formed. He stepped down from ministry for two years and then was restored back into ministry with the blessing of those same apostolic leaders. We as a church knew what our former senior pastor shared publicly and many people, including myself, simply believed his version of the story. But on June 14th of this year, Cindy Clemshire shared her story publicly, clearly stating that she was the one referred to in Robert Morris's story that he had described as a sexual affair. And contrary to Robert's version, Cindy was not a consenting adult, but rather a child of 12 and a victim of sexual abuse. Furthermore, she shared that the sexual abuse happened on multiple occasions over four and a half years. And on the same evening of June 14th, Robert Morris directed Gateway employees to release a statement that intended to minimize the severity of Cindy's claims in a final attempt to conceal the truth. And as you know, our Gateway family was rocked by these revelations. Over the next 48 hours, the elders were able to independently verify critical elements of Cindy's story, enabling us to move forward and swiftly confront Robert Morris. And when we insisted on meeting with him, he immediately resigned. But despite his resignation, further investigation was needed. And we knew that we as elders did not have the objectivity or the qualifications to properly investigate. So Haynes and Boone was chosen because they are deeply experienced with conducting internal investigations. And this inquiry had to be truly independent, meaning it was conducted by a law firm with no prior connection to Gateway Church or any individuals involved. But 
all the lawyers are adhering to laws that started off with the Constitution of 1776 and the U.S. Constitution of 1776 is Anderson's Freemason Constitution of 1723. We are under the Luciferian laws. The lawyers are inside of the system of the bad guys, the Masons. They are just taking care of keeping everything internal. We can do whatever we need to to punish um, Robert Morris, but we're going to make the Masons not get in trouble and the Christians look bad. I love you guys. Come out of the Beast of Babylon. The New Apostolic Reformation is the new apostles reforming the theology of the church around their Luciferian doctrine. And the sex cult is inside this group and they're inside Bethel. Please come over here to the playlist and watch these 19 videos that will be 20 videos after I post this one that are pedophile pastors. They're all connected to the New Apostolic Reformation. This guy is calling at Bethel is calling for a revival of Count Zinzendorf's cult that's called Mustard Seed Freemasonry that's connected to the Moravian Freemasons. That guy's asking for Mike Bickle's Moravian cult that Rick Joyner owns the actual location of Zinzendorf's cult and can, uh, one sec, going to pause for a sec. Uh, do I need to? No, Rick Joyner. Okay, got my name back real quick. So Rick Joyner bought the property in North Carolina for the Moravians and he ends up uh, lifting up this guy. Uh, I'm not going to remember his name. The guy that he that he um, shows adoration towards is the guy that taught Count Zinzendorf, and that guy that was just before Count Zinzendorf is the reason that every child in the United States is obligated by law to go to school. And if they don't go to school, then their parents go to jail. This is all. This is. All Freemason occultism. They are forcing you to be indoctrinated into the Freemason teachings and habits as a student in elementary, junior high, and high school. They're teaching you the Kabbalah and calling it science and calling the triumphs of the Freemasons history. This is a more than 200 year old sex cult. When, um, Oh, I don't remember this kid's name either offhand. Okay. When this kid got popped for killing his wife and setting up this other guy to take the fall, it was all done at IHOP KC 11 years ago. His sex cult, his sex cult was only two blocks behind the IHOP KC um, main sanctuary. And the cult victims start telling their story of how he would make all the members trade wives and how they'd have to, if somebody got married, they'd have to get married and um, con consummate their marriage in front of the male leadership. Like visually, the guys in the group would be watching other people having sex. So these people telling their occult story of what the cult was like inside um, Tyler Deaton's sex cult, the exact same habits were happening at Count Zinzendorf's sex cult. It's a mere copy. The same stories that were told in whatever it was uh, when Zinzendorf was over in North Carolina and not in Moravia Falls or uh, oh, what was the no, Moravia Okay, never mind. Let's keep going. Okay, this is my personal testimony. I am an NAR sexual assault target. It shouldn't say victim. I didn't, I 
got away from the guy fast enough that I shouldn't call myself a victim. I was a target and I knew that I got targeted and I kept my eyes forward watching what evil was in front of me. This is the New Apostolic Reformation Sex Cults. Torben Sondergaard. Ch Torben Child Trafficking. Todd History Lesson. Todd Bentley History Lesson about him touching a minor boy. Todd White saying that sex traffickers are not our enemies while wearing a Baphomet shirt. This is how Bethel kidnapped my kid. Bethel Church faked the kidnapping of Sherry Pepini. It never happened. It was a stage play to get Bethel back onto the world stage where they were back in front of all the new TV stations giving their we donated $50,000 reward to the return of or, or the um, information leading to the arrest and conviction of the people who kidnapped Sherry Papini. But a year before the kidnapping, the same guy that's helping to get Sherry Papini back, Cameron, I was at Bethel. He told us that they brought him into Bethel to teach people how not to get kidnapped a year before this kidnapping happened. This TV show from Dan Schneider, who is an accused pedophile who had four or five convicted pedophiles working on this TV show, who Dan Schneider from Nickelodeon that was making this TV show, his on Nickelodeon also was a TV show called Fairly Odd, Pel Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, and I don't remember what the dog's TV show was named, but all three of those were drawn by Butch Hartman, who is the creator of those three shows, and a Bethel member. He goes to Bethel Church. The one pedophile told on the other pedophile's group inside semiotic symbolism. Okay, I've been told not to trust Fritz Springmeier, but this PDF that's inside um, this 28 second long video, the video is only 28 seconds, go into the comments or the show description and there's a PDF that you can open that shows how Bethel and the Assemblies of God create undetectable mind control slaves. They're using trauma-based mind control. When Scott and Darren Grubbs were killed, Bill and his cult that were already around, Bill Grubbs and Crystal Grubbs, Scott and Darren Grubbs drove off of a bridge in a car that had been gifted to them. I was in that car the week before the car accident, and the car was a designed death trap. I grew up around cars. I've worked in the, in the car industry. I went to the CHP officer across the street from my house in the last two weeks and spoke with him. He was the CHP officer that was over the top of Weaverville, California, back in the 80s and 90s when Bill and Chris had their church up in Weaverville, California. And I spoke to him, and this CHP officer happens to be a unibody um, Ford car expert. So when I started talking to him about that my friends were in a Mercury Maverick, and I described to him what the Mercury Maverick um, accelerator or gas pedal should look like, and that this gas pedal that was in the stock car was not the fuel pedal, the accelerator pedal that was inside the Mercury Maverick that Scott had received as a gift. When the gas pedal got stuck to the floor, there was a piece of metal on the backside of that gas pedal that I visually saw with my own eyeballs. I got down on the floor, looked behind the gas pedal and said, why did the gas pedal get stuck to the carpet? I looked and there's a piece of metal that somebody had taken what I'm guessing is a Dremel tool and cut it and formed it and made it into a piece of, it made it into the hook side of a piece of Velcro. You need a hook 
and you need the loop. So the loop carpet and the hook of metal, that car was designed to crash. When Scott and Darren passed away, Bill and Crystal were with my parents at Valley Christian Fellowship on New Year's Eve, 1993, in a worship session. Now, at that time, Donna De Silva, that runs Sozo, was at Valley Christian Fellowship with us. She already had the Sozo sticker in the back window of her vehicle because I used to see it and say, I recognize that, but I don't know why. It was because not Sozo, but Zoso is a demon that is listed on, uh, I don't remember. It's not Pink Floyd's album. Maybe it is Pink Floyd. One of those guys used Zoso. And so when I saw Sozo, that exact same script was on Donna De Silva's window. And I saw that since I was 16, 15 years old, something like that. So I saw that at the exact same time as um, Scott and Darren's death. And when Scott and Darren died, they brought Crystal and Bill Grubbs into Sozo. And Sozo is low-grade hypnotism recession therapy. It is EMDR recession therapy. It is not. They're saying that Sozo means to be complete again, but you're to be complete in Yeshua HaMashiach. You're not to be complete in the theology of these, this witchcraft. So the trauma-based mind control is real. They used it on my friend's parents. My friend's parents had the most influence in that entire congregation to be able to say, we want to bring Bill Grubbs back down to Reading. He's going to lead us now that Ray Larson is gone and Earl Johnson is no longer in charge and that type of stuff. Earl Johnson was removed from leadership of Bethel Church back in 1982. And then Ray Larson was given... Bethel Church in 1984. Now, Ray Larson was running the church in January 1994 when Scott and Darren's memorial was going on, and Earl still led the congregation for Scott and Darren's memorial service. So, Right here, we have a video explaining that at Brian Johnson's house, they have a 501c3 nonprofit church that's called Goat Lord Farms. What do you raise as a goat herder? You raise kids. And this cult is using these Kimberly Johnson owned 501c3 nonprofit organizations that are using. Freemason esoteric logos for pedophile children stuff, for human trafficking. The three different companies that Kimberly Johnson runs, Bill Johnson's ex-sister-in-law, the three companies she runs that are 501c3 nonprofits, all use pedophile human trafficking logos. And they take the kids from their parents using the court systems and put them into the hands of these occultists. And then each of those occultists, they probably get paid three or $4,000 per person, per kid that they are housing now. They kidnap children and they indoctrinate them into the Luciferian Freemason systems. These, all, these things all talk about the kidnappings and the pedophiles and the dirty little secrets at Bethel. And it appears that I need to go add another video into this. Okay, there will be 21 videos. I'm going to add the video that's from the three videos down from the top most recently added videos that says that there was a blonde girl that came up and stood in front of me while I was standing out on the street corner with the exposing Bethel sign. And she said that she, that the children at Bethel are getting raped. 
and I've got three witnesses to that lady saying those words. Four videos down, sorry. They are raping our children. It's not just Robert Morris, you guys. It's the entire leadership of the charismatic movement, of the Jehovah's Witnesses, their Bethel and 60,000 victims. It's the Mormons. It's the Seventh-day Adventists. It's anybody who's not trying to do the Hebraic faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're the Freemasons that have snuck into leadership, put themselves in positions of power and say, I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet. God sent me. Chris Valentin says, God sent me. He also says, I used to have visions of raping my children and murdering my children 40 and 60 times a day. The prophets are liars. They're pedophiles. They're touching our children. Go to the police first. And if it's information that you believe we as leadership of Gateway need to know, you can contact. You can go to the police who wear badges that are stars that represent the fallen angels. And as they go up from lieutenant to captain to chief and all that stuff, and they get their chevron, that's the hidden number 33 on their arm, and then the two chevrons that, that equal 66 that equals the fallen angels, and then they get their three chevrons, which is the hidden number 666. These people are occultists. So you can go to the police and you can go and tell the Freemasons that other Freemasons are touching their children and they can all pretend and make it all go away, according to this guy. You please do so. You can go to the police first. And if it's information that you believe we as leadership of Gateway need to know, you can contact us directly at connect at gatewayelders.com. Your email will be held in the strictest of confidence. And to anyone out there, if you were a victim of sexual abuse as a child, I want you to know you cannot consent to sexual abuse or sexual activity as a child. No child ever can. Don't let the belief that it was consensual stop you from coming forward.